Can you sing a Mose? <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, where's, where's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> this is when you put the iTunes on and you just mouth it. <laughs> no, next time you, yeah, you, can, <laughs> you can sing it for us. Hey, Darcy, did you do a memory verse? Sorry, I didn't learn one this week. No next worries. One. Yeah, next one. Cool. So my one, guys, I can't, might have to read the end of it. I know the beginning. Um, oh, wait. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, which is, uh, do not uh, be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then there's the next, next part I need to keep checking. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Cool. So that's so great. Keep going, guys. Keep learning the memory verses because it is a powerful weapon against the enemy in any time of need. You can just pull those verses out. I know for me this week, I've been stressed and I'll say, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. And I just keep saying, I was like, Lord, you told me this. That's what I'm asking. And so keep going, guys. So we are in Luke 12, verse 13. Um, to 21 and we might go further depending on how um, we go Amos here but um, I'll just give a quick summary of last week where we did the beginning of Luke chapter 12 and I'll just read what I wrote in our group chat so last week we learned about the yeast we learned that yeast is a rising agent that creates something big from something little. Be on your guard from teachings of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, because it can work its way into your heart that will make it hard to get rid of, and you may not realize you have it till it turns into something bigger. The other thing that we learned was that the Holy Spirit will guide us to all truth. The truth is always honest and honesty comes from a genuine heart. That was a big take home, I think, for everyone, genuine heart. Ask the spirit to give you a genuine heart. This is the power puncher way to combat hypocrisy. Cool. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Mose. Thanks, Mose. Cool. Thank you for that, Bina. Um, so, yeah, we are on... Luke 12, uh, verse 11. Um, could, uh, could I have somebody um, read it's just the first two verses? Uh, verse 11 to 13, please. Uh, Chapter 12, eh, Mose? So 11, you yep, want to... Luke 12. 12, verse 11 to 13. Yes, please. Okay, I can do that quickly. When you are brought below synagogues, rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what... Oh, oh sorry, sorry, Vina. Um, 13 to... I thought so. 13 to 15, please. Sorry. Um, someone in the crowd, so this is entitled The Parable of the Rich Fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Cool. Um, yeah, nice and short. Uh, the first, um, the first thing that caught my eye was in the New King James. It's got um. As soon as I heard the word inheritance, I um, I started. I immediately started thinking about myself and what I would inherit in this world, and it didn't take me long to think because um. I realized there was I was gonna get nothing in this world. I think I think my parents say wouldn't uh, didn't leave me with anything around, <laughs> um, and so I searched up the so in the Jewish um, customs, the elders or the firstborn um, will get basically everything. Basically, uh, the firstborn will even get the property, the whole the whole property of um of his parents 
and the brothers will so if if um if there is any other kids the brothers so the elders will have uh more than so if there's two brothers the eldest brother will get uh 70 to 75 percent and the other brother will only get about 30 to 25 percent but if there's three brothers uh, the eldest will get 50 percent and then the other two brothers will have to share the other 50 percent so 25 uh percent each and then um if somebody could read um deuteronomy 21 verse 17 please it's it's more clear in the old testament uh deuteronomy 21 verse verse 17 please uh, I got you. Hi, Cara. Hi, uh, so 21 verse 17. Yes, please. Um, he must acknowledge the son of his unloved wife as the firstborn by giving him a double share of all he has. That son is the first sign of his father's strength. The right of the firstborn belongs to him. Yeah, thank you for that, Cara. Right one. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, so the um, so yeah, it's all written in the Old Testament for us that the eldest gets everything basically, and then the the next child will get maybe even thirty percent, and the eldest will get will get most of it. And um, so in verses fourteen it says, "But he said to him, man, or oh, Jesus speaking, man who made me a judge, or an arbitrator over you in verse 15 and he said to them take heed who are and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses so in this story um i'm guessing it's it's a younger brother it's not the eldest brother i'm asking jesus it's got to be one of the younger brothers it's either it's either a younger brother or the two younger ones so in so he's asking Jesus to to judge or to to get one of the brothers to um or ask the outer brother if that's what it makes sense to share his <clears throat> his inheritance with him or him or the two younger ones to make it all even for them. Um, I think that's what. It'll, um, does anybody else have anything to add on to? If that's what it makes sense. It's so funny that Jesus is, um, sorry, Jesus yeah, is, is sharing about the importance of um, standing up for him. And this man, he, he it misses, it misses his whole head. He's just like, but um, he's asking Jesus about his financial situation. And also this little brother, he's, um, sometimes we go on this like, you know, this crusade thinking we're, we're fighting for our right, you know, I have a right, you know, to be fair, but it, that's just masking our jealousy, our, co co how do you pronounce it, covetousness, I think, does that make sense, you know, we, we mask our um, fight for justice, or, you know, to be fair, um, as, as what the root of the cause the real root of the causes is, is us being just wanting something that doesn't belong to us wanting something being envious and jealous of some what someone else has and it's yeah jesus says beware of it thank you for that not a year it's um it's because yeah, remember guys um that jesus can see into our hearts and um you can see that this um the brother is uh this man is all about greed and he's got greed in his heart and so in verses uh verse 15 so instead of him uh instead of jesus telling the man um jesus actually warns the crowd about the danger of 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 uh, greed um uh, does anybody else um have anything to add on to the short verse um, I think it shows that sometimes greed really does blind you to the truth, like how Natal was saying. 
it's like he was just trying to talk to them about the importance of him um, as a son of man, but he didn't even hear that. He was just thinking about himself. And I think that greed can do that. Um, it makes you just, it makes you just want, actually I find that greed just makes you want more. Um, it's like one thing's not enough. You end up wanting one thing, then you want more, then more, then more, then more. It never satisfies. And um, even in this world, there's so much that people want. You know, they want a great job. They want a great house and they want flash. You know, they, they, they're they not settled with um, just anything. You know, I can, I've met people who are just so, um, and even me, myself, I ha can't forget myself. But um, yeah, there are times when even me, uh, I look at something and actually what I have, somebody would really appreciate it. But to me, I'm like, oh, it's so old and so raggedy. And so it's just remembering that's not important because once you want something, you end up wanting more and more and more. The only thing that we should really want is God and then want him more and more and more. Yeah, thank you for that, Vina. Yeah, in this life, you know, we that is, that's so true though, because we we always want for some reason. It's always just want, 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 and then we finally get it. It doesn't last that long. Like um, so, whenever um, when I was reading this, I tried to put it into our time. Like for myself, uh, whenever I, um, whenever I want things, I always um, think about the people that have it. So like um, our celebrities and millionaires, you know, they um, they have stuff that they uh, I wanted. And um, just growing up, uh, definitely in like since I'm not gonna inherit anything from um, from my parents, it's pretty sad though. But it's true though. And um, so I think about celebrities and stuff and. And the celebrities that always come to my mind when I was growing up, uh, it was um, rappers and stuff like that. I'll think about um, 50 Cent and the game. You know, they got everything. Uh, they uh, I always think about their glamorous life. You know, they have all the cars, all the houses, all the clothing that, that we all want. And, and especially the game. Uh, I used to thought I was the games. Um, the games Sunday, I'll tell Chanel there. Yeah, um, I'm I'm related to the gaming, but uh, so I couldn't um, I couldn't I couldn't actually get the money that he had. So the next thing was dress up like him. So I'll have my red bandana and <laughs> I'll try and look for any um gears that I had and and yeah. Uh, uh story. Uh, I'll cut the story short. Uh, yeah, the game had everything, but yeah, my my account was still on uh, minus A, so, um, so yeah, uh, anybody else would like to add on to, to that little? Uh, uh, sure. yeah. I, was, I, I was looking at the, um, that verse and it says um, all kinds of greed. Does anybody know what, the, what other types of greed there is? Just a question. Not sure. Maybe time? Greedy with your time? <clears throat> Not just money? Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe it, it may, maybe it means that you could really be greedy with anything. Uh, you could even be greedy with God's word. You know, you hey, could be yourself. Drop the mic on that. Yeah. Um, because that's what I noticed with the Pharisees is that <laughs> the Pharisees, um, they were doing technically all the right things from the outside, but it just goes to show you can even use what God has given, like prayer. You know how he was talking about prayer, and then he was talking that, oh, you go and preach it from the, from the high top so everybody can see you. Um, so you could even take something as beautiful as prayer and be greedy with it because it's about yourself. So you're just doing it for yourself. It's not for anybody else. I guess that greed can technically be greedy for anything. Yeah. And it really shows us how deceitful our heart is, which is why we need to check ourselves constantly. 
Let's continue. Yeah, probably check ourselves constantly and constantly ask God to check ourselves as well because we could easily be greedy with something and not notice, know, know it. Mm. Just like how we were saying last week with the yeast, it's like it's in there, we don't notice it, then it turns into something even bigger. So, yeah, the importance of praying, Lord, seek me. Oh, I learned it. I learned it. Seek me, oh, oh God. Is that right? Search me. Search me, oh God. God. Know my heart, test me, know my anxious thoughts, see if there's any um, offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So constantly praying that. Yeah. And knowing that our life does not consist in the things that we possess. You know, and, and just like Mosi, you know, us, we think our parents have left us nothing. Because um, when I look at my parents too, it's probably the same story, but but Mose, like you have your mom's humility. You know, it's it, inheritance doesn't have to be physical. You know, it could be something that spiritual. Um, which I'd like to think that I'm rich in anger <laughs> from my dad, or you know, just those types of things. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that, um, Nata and, and Vina. And Tufts, yeah, yeah, no, um, yeah, definitely, uh, um, didn't leave me with any material stuff, but, um, I thank them for, for my Christian life, you know, our parents, um, have gifted us with that, and, and that's a, uh, that's an advantage eh, for us as Christians, you know, it's, it's harder to, to talk to somebody that, that wasn't um, raised up around around the gospel like us, we were, we were born into it, you know, so it made it easier for us to, I, I find it easier for myself to go out of the out into the world and to come back because I was a, Christ, a Christian and so I knew where I, I came from and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's another one. Um, that's a different, definite bonus from my parents for um, uh, leaving behind with me. And yeah. can I add to that, Mosse? Yeah, yeah. Um, because isn't that a beautiful thing that your parents left to you, though? You know, uh, this goes to show that we can be pushing our whole life to achieve something to give to our kids in monetary, like in money, in in physical stuff, and we can work our whole life for that. But at the end, that's not what's important. And I always think about that um, on my deathbed, you know, I know I'm not going to be wishing that my kids lived in a mansion or had a fancy car. I'm just going to probably be wishing I spent a uh, good time with them, like that quality time with them, uh, to know them. Because the quality time, Jesus, that's what he gave people. It was quality time, really caring about them. And um, so I was just going to say, what a beautiful gift your parents gave you. What a beautiful thing that we can give our kids, you know, rather than pushing for monetary things or physical stuff. And yeah, actually, I was going to say something else. If it pops in my head, I'll say it. But um, yeah, just what a beautiful gift. It goes to show that our minds are not the same as God's and how much we need him to change that thinking pattern. Thank you. Yeah, and I remember uh, Pastor Kili saying uh, the best crown that we can receive, or the um, for for our kids, the best crown is not the crown that we give for um, graduations and stuff like that for our kids, but the best crown is um, is the crown that we get. We're all queuing up for to receive the crown of eternal life. Um, you know, that, that always stuck in my head here, that one. Um, just with what you were saying, you know, that we want the best for our kids and the best for each other, for our brothers and sisters. And it's not in the stuff that we, it's not in the material stuff. We can get uh, so many things, so many houses, so many cars, but that's not, um, that's not what we're after at the end of the day. We're all after that, uh, that cue at the end when um, uh, Jesus Christ comes back and 
you know, hopefully we're all, I know we're all going to be there to receive that crown of eternal life. And, um, you know, thank you for sharing, Nina, uh, everybody. Uh, should we uh, carry on to the next two verse? And um, what's that other saying, you know? Um, I think we went through it in Luke. Uh, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? Yeah, that's another verse that's always... Um, uh, followed me around wherever I go. Uh, yep, thank you for that, guys. Uh, if we could all move to our verses, if somebody could read our verses 16 to 17, please. Yep, um, I can go. Yep. Um, then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? Keep going. Sorry, Mossy, do, do you want me to keep going? I'm, I'm saying, is that a yes? <laughs> I can't hear you. Yeah, just 16 and 17, please. Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? Sorry about that. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, just reading that, um, who would love to be that rich man? Who would love to be in his shoes? You know, he's uh, he's got so much crop, so you know, um, or wealth, he doesn't even know what to deal with it. Mm. Um, would you guys give it to your neighbours or? Or your family, or would you store it? Just a quick question there. I'll do both. <laughs> yeah, if I was to be honest. Yeah. Share and share and put some away. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about the boys? Uh, tough, small, and back. Yeah, I'd probably um, store it for later, but not share it. And you got no room? Hey, you got no room, but as crops, is it like, okay, I don't know. You know how they say that, live off the fat of the land? No. Yeah, you know, thanks for um, for that, Tufts, for not sharing. Sorry, what was the question? Sorry, what was the question? Oh, do you want us to read it again? The... <laughs> no, I thought the first part uh, was the question. Yeah, so, so, this, so the rich man, he has uh, so much crops or wealth, you know, um, that he doesn't even know what to do with it. He's, but he's not um, willing to share it or to, he doesn't even mention his family or, or his friends. He's just talking about himself and he's willing to, he, oh, he's not even, he doesn't even mention his workers. He's talking about himself, thinking about um, storing, putting it all in, all in storage and um, <coughs> just not sharing it, his crops or his wealth. Uh, what would you used to do? Would you guys share it with your neighbors or family or would you... Put it in storage, like um, like Tufts. Um, probably give it to those who need need it more. Depends what you have. I guess yeah. We'll probably give it out. Yeah, I'll probably do both. <laughs> Store and give. Or sell it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, thank you for that, boys. Uh, could I yeah, definitely agree. Any more questions? Um, yeah, any fish to go? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, could have, um, uh, Nata, if you can carry on to uh, verse 18 to 21, please. 
18 to 21. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will be those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Thank you for that, Nata. Um, so what's, a, what's another word for this man? So he's not willing to... Suffer. No, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's he's just talking about himself. Uh, that's all greedy! Of, like, yep, greed. Selfish. Yep, selfish. Mm-hmm. Idiot. And a fool. <laughs> oh. in my one it, it describes him as a fool the rich fool a rich fool yeah a fool a fool I all yeah greedy greedy and he, he's just all about he's himself kind of lonely loser no, <laughs> no <laughs> room he's like my my crop my bar my eye I, he's like an eye fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all about himself. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Uh, the word that, that, uh, that I thought of straight away is a hoarder. <laughs> I'm sure we've, uh, we know of a few hoarders that are at our houses, but um, yeah. So he—that's the first word that came up to my mind. Dude. He's a hoarder. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to share, or you know, he—he's—he's he's got his um, all the crops and all their wealth with him. He doesn't want to share with anyone. He has, he you know, he has more than than enough to meet his needs, but still. Uh, he's even he's got plenty, but still wants it all to for himself or to to be in in storage. So yeah. can I just ask a question? Um, <clears throat> for the for verse nineteen, it says, "And I'll sit back, and I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry." So he's referring to himself as his own friend. <laughs> What a loser! <laughs> like looking in the mirror, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Very delusional. Yes. Very. Very I. I guess that's what happens when you're so much about yourself, eh? That's mm-hmm. that ends up happening. You're all about me, I. That at the end, that's all that's left. That's all. <laughs> I find it, um, sorry, Mosu, can I just add, just reading about it and I'm just thinking it's sometimes um, just me personally, I I can't stand being around people like that, Um, you know, I, 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 and um, rather, you know, how do you approach someone? That's like that. Anyways, thanks. That's my two cents. You tell me what God said. You fool now. I know. You are. <laughs> no, no, <I> don't. <laughs> hey, ooh. I think I, in the word for today, I think a lot of it, like the last couple of days, was about dealing with um, different loving, yeah, loving those hard yeah. to love or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I can't remember exactly what it said, but I just remember one part where it said that sometimes when you're dealing with someone difficult, you ask God to remove that person from you. But but um, in the word for today, they were encouraging you 
to not ask God to remove that person because at the end of the day, God has put that person there for a reason, but ask God for patience and the fruit of the spirit. I think the only way you can deal with those people, honestly, is those people like me. (laughs) I don't want to get those people like me. You just have to um, ask God for the Holy Spirit and for the fruits of the spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, patience. Because after all, love is not um, about ourselves, but I find it really hard. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And it's draining though. It Mm -hmm. takes, it takes so much out of you when you deal with those people. I'm probably yeah. bad because I'm like, oh, yeah, go you. Oh, you're the man. <laughs> so you know, which one I shouldn't. <laughs> they might go, yeah, I'm the man. <laughs> I should keep doing it. <laughs> no, but um, how about last week how Carl was saying, you know, be genuine. And uh, maybe sometimes they... Um, they, including ourselves, we have to be told uh, the truth yeah. from love. Yeah, tell them, bro, your fried rice is not good. <laughs> <laughs> fried rice or? <laughs> but that's a hard one. I think uh, uh, as soon as you start getting annoyed with other people, like, well, for me, especially, I always just um, check myself first. Oh, before I start. Yeah, that reminds me what was in there in the word for today. Chi, you probably read it too. Is about when you feel there is a um they said that in your brain, when you start before uh, so you get angry, but before you uh, react to the anger, there's like a half a second moment between mm. uh, quarter of a second. Yeah, mm. quarter of a second there, yeah. And that's the time where we can either ask for the Holy Spirit or we yeah. can naturally react. To that, AT, that's what it means. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, thank you. So that's good, eh? React in that quarter of a second. Thank you, guys. Um, I was just thinking that, um, so this guy is wealthy, he's a, he's a rich man, and I'm not rich, so it's hard for me to um, to walk in his shoes because I don't know what he's like. You know, he's who knows. He you know, he he could have worked hard to to um, to be where he is now, and I think it might be hard for him to to share like because um, it's it's taken him so long to to build their wealth. You know, you're not gonna just hand it out to you, somebody that comes in, hey man, you got too much on your end, can you just chuck some over the fence over to me, <laughs> you know, like, but he, in his mind, you know, he's like, hey man, but I, I've worked, you know, I've worked so hard for this, so maybe in his mind, I'm, I'm just guessing here that, that it probably feels like um, the poor is, is robbing him because of his hard work that he's, you know, why, why am I working hard when this guy here, he could have done the same thing? But yeah, he, I think uh, I'm just guessing here, but because I'm not rich, you know, so I'm just trying to put my uh, my feet in his shoes and see what, what I'll do if I had that much, that much wealth. And, uh, and we find out in verse 20, um, his plan with uh, with his wealth um, don't really go to plan because it doesn't carry over to eternity. Yeah, yeah good enough. No, and it's just it, it sort of like links to the what we read before, masking our greed for you know like I did that I worked for that so I deserve that. Um, you know that kind of attitude really down deep is is the cover being yeah being greedy that where you think i did the work i did this when you don't acknowledge who was really at hand giving you all that stuff mm-hmm. like god gave it to you 
Uh, and that's that's the problem when we get to that stage because we're thinking, I worked so hard for this. No, honey, God worked hard. <laughs> that. Yeah, me as well. God made sure you had that. And I, I've all I've learned over the years, God only gives you a profit so you can be profitable to others. You know, God only gives you money so you can give to other people. God only gives you children. I, I feel like God's given me my kids. And sometimes I feel God's given me the, my children so I know how, what the struggle with kids. And so when I see parents, I'm like, struggle is real. Like, you know, you can... You can relate to people. And that's like how God gives um, maybe Nata a job at Adra, you know, because Nata can relate to people who are struggling as well in different countries. And God only gives you these things so that you can understand it from other people's point of view. And you can also give to those people. Even in hard trials, I find God gives you those hard trials. I know this is not talking about money now, physical stuff, but it's still the same thing. It's the thing that God's giving you that, this testimony, so that you can go and use that testimony for people walking the same line. And the same with money. God gives you money so you can give it to other people. Thank you for that, guys. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was just thinking as well, uh, myself, you know, I, I always wanted a house for for my family. And we finally get one. And then I realized it. I realized that it's not it's not the house that makes it a home. It's your actual family, the, the people inside the house that make it a home. And I definitely agree with uh, what Vina said there, that the gift that we have is not for us to... Or, the, or in other words, the blessings that we, we get daily, you know, it's not only for us, it's for us to share with our family and friends. And, and yeah, definitely, definitely agree with that, Vina. Thank you for that. And, um, yeah, so we find out in, in verse 20 that all his, uh, his, his wealth that he, that he planned, it wasn't, um, it doesn't go to plan. It, uh, it says that um, because it doesn't carry over to eternity, and because um, it says, uh, so this is Jesus speaking in verse twenty. The things which you have prepared, whose will they be? So he's asking him when you, in other words, when you die, who are they going to? Uh, and so when, 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 when you die, someone else's. In other words, it's going to enjoy your wealth for you, or your hard work. Uh, so why keep it? Why keep it in storage when you have more than you need? So share it with your family and friends. Uh, yeah, if anybody wants to add on to, on to that, any thoughts, dear guys? Someone who strives to be rich in this world will end up leaving this world poorer than the poorest man because he becomes poor physically and, and, and spiritually. And, and this verse, he's like my crops, my barns, my goods. And in the end, it doesn't even belong to him. Not even his soul belongs to him. Um, and if it wasn't able to go into eternal, eternity, where is it then? It would have to be hell. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, why, why work so hard for it when it when it's not gonna take you over to the next world? You know, you're you're just gonna somebody else is gonna um, enjoy all your hard work for you. So take that chance to, to share it. Like um, in, in ourselves, you know, it's sometimes it's, you know, when our family asks us for something or our friends, you know, like, hey, can I have uh, those, uh, your, your old pair of shoes? You know, we don't wanna, <laughs> we don't wanna um, give it to them or, you know, our clothing, but it's, that's all just material stuff at the end of the day, you know, that doesn't, uh, 
that is, that's not going to take us, it's, it's not going to go over to eternity. And yeah, thank you for that. Uh, does anybody else uh, want to add on to you? Um, I just remembered, I think, Doug Batchelor's story where um, he spoke about his parents and how they were really wealthy and his um, mom, she was like a something within um, like the movies and stuff. And like she accumulated so much money and um, in the end she was just really, really sad and she was lonely. And then um, also the same with the father, like he was a millionaire. He remarried um, multiple times because he was trying to search for happiness. And um, I think Doug Batchelor realized as well that even even though he comes from a rich background, if, if he doesn't, um, if, when he found a relationship with God, like that's where he found real richness or he felt the the richness that his parents thought that they had. So I guess um, for me realizing now that, yeah, it's pretty pointless to try and search and want the things of this world and um, try and store it for what, for nothing. Like, yeah, thank you. Oh. Sorry, Mosse, can I add something? It's me, Chi. No? Okay. Can you hear me? Or you, Chi? Oh, yeah. No, just probably just to add on to what Darcy said. I, um, what was um, in verse 20, but God said to him, full this night? I was thinking, you know, you, with all the riches, overnight, you can lose it. And so, you know, you may have worked and um, for so long, but that that part there this night your soul will be required of you so um you know just as quickly as god can give he can also take yeah thanks and a lot of times we um we think we should be scared about being poor where in fact we should be scared about being rich <laughs> um because it's dangerous you know it's easier for a camel or, or what was that Vina? what's that first it's easier it's harder for uh, yeah it's like a camel going through the eye of a needle a needle yeah then yeah. a rich man or a rich man mm -hmm. in his life that mm -hmm. yeah and um, i was just going to say too i was thinking you know if we store up our treasures in heaven and we share that love of God with others who are now also storing up their treasures in heaven. You know, they're living a life that's for eternity. I mean, imagine how much is left then. Even if we physically die, which we will be, we will, will live eternally uh, when we are risen again. But if we physically die, how much life is still left with all those people we've we've talked to, who have converted, all those people who um, God has used us to share the word with others, then how much is left? But the, the rich man who was all about himself, absolutely nothing is left for him. He's died his final death and also not impacted anybody around him either who have now turned their life for God. So, yeah, that was just something I thought of. Yeah. His mirror will talk to his other mirror. <laughs> He's left the mirror. <laughs> Thank you for that, guys. Yeah, uh, definitely agree with everybody. Um, yeah, like Chi said, yeah, he can take it overnight. You know, all the blessings that we have, all the um, all the knowledge that we have, you know, if we don't uh, take his word forward, share it with our family and friends, you know, it can all disappear on us overnight. And, you yeah, know, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, so we'll skip. Uh, I'll just like to read uh, verse 21 again. So it is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards or toward God. Uh, does anybody know what that means? Like to be rich towards God? 
Just a quick question. Um, my Bible just says in the um, study notes, uh, it means treasures in heaven. That's all it says. Treasures in heaven. Thank you, Vina. Um, yes, uh, does that mean when I was reading it, um, since I'm not rich, does this does this still count with me or was it only towards the rich? I'm just gonna jump right in there. Um, because I think we've all been talking about our financial richness. And I think for all of us, myself included, is that we're not financially rich, but we're spiritually rich. And I think um, that is probably what, that is kind of like part of, the, part of the meaning about being rich towards God is that we're spiritually rich. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Like rich and good works rich in good spirit, rich in humility, rich in, in God, godly values, godly character. Um, Those fruits of the spirit. Eh? Yeah, and, and in saying that, um, you know, we're talking about being greedy and not sharing with others. I think Davina touched on it earlier tonight about um, sharing our spiritual, oh, our spiritual gifts or blessings with other people. So when we're talking about greed and keeping things to ourselves, I don't think it's necessarily the financial and the money wealth, if that makes sense. Because there are people that will take the spiritual or the um, gospel understandings and keep it to themselves and say that they're, you know, they're being in, a, in an exclusive group rather than being inclusive of other people. And I think that may be... Um, you know, all of this is definitely in reference to financial wealth, but I thought I also think it's a metaphor for the spiritual wealth that we have that we can give to other people instead of keeping it to ourselves. That's my two cents. Thanks. Amen. That was awesome because because financial it's it's what we see, right? But deep down behind that, that's the issue. Hey, it's not so much our what, what we physically have. Hi, Can I ask a question? Yeah, Ash. Hey, hey, hey. That's tough as um mate. What about um tithe? Like giving back to God. Is that consider border if you don't pay tithe? Not saying for anyone that doesn't. It's just a question of this. Well, the Bible does say that money is God's, so. It, and it's not so much the money that's the principle. It's, um, Obedience. Oh, how do you say it? Giving. Yeah, giving. Uh, yeah it's, it's returning. It's not even, you know, we think it's giving, but it's returning because it's not even ours. Like he yeah. gave us the, like the hundred and he's telling us to return the 10 and that's uh just for our relationship and obedience not so much because he needs it because god doesn't need it really <coughs> and uh, also just more said to add to um you know when you were saying that um you know we're not rich because because the story is about this rich man hey eh, who stores everything for himself i find that it's also just when you're in want when you're like, I want something, and that want ends up being more and more, and but what you're wanting is not God. I find that that can be the track that leads us towards being like the rich man, whereas you're just wanting something that is not of God. You're wanting, it could be anything. Like we said before, it could be something good that could be considered greed. It could be something good that you're wanting to stand up in front of people to preach God's word, right? But actually you're just wanting it for yourself it's that selfish ambition you're wanting it for yourself and not for god and maybe that's also what it's meaning here when it says 
but it's not rich toward God. You're wanting something for yourself. You're not wanting something for God. PlayStation controller. Did you know? Throw that in the bin. Was that controller? Yeah, you just go. <laughs> yeah, definitely the story, yeah, it is about that rich man, but yeah. the problem wasn't the rich man's wealth. Uh, the problem was his uh, selfish hoarding. And can I just go back to the tithes? Um, so the tithes, I think it's it's uh, it's all in our motives as well, because you know we can put in five hundred or whatever, whatever our ten percent is, and then if our heart is not there, you know we can put it in and we can just we'll be thinking you know that could have gone to our groceries this week or could have gone to my rent or my car payments, and then there'll be another guy that doesn't put in anything but his heart was. Um, his heart was all there, you know. So, I guess it's um, it depends on our motives, eh? I guess, or what our purposes of our tithes, because we all know where um, while we pay our tithes, you know, we got to give back our ten percent, his ten percent, you know, that's not ours. And yeah, I guess it depends on our motives, and yes, yeah, so. Well, that's my little two cents of the tithe, and and we'll go back to our story about the about the the actual problem was with, with this rich man. You know, it wasn't his his wealth. You know, at the end of the day, we all need money. We all gotta pay the bills. We all gotta pay the rent. But it's it's once we put our wealth before Jesus Christ, then then there's gonna be a problem. You know. Uh, it's all in our motives, you know. If, if we're so driven to to be like Fifty Cent, to be like the game, and that's why we want to be wealthy in 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 money form, then that's the that's the wrong the wrong idea, the wrong purpose for us. And yeah, it, it all comes back down to our motives, you know. If we if we are motivated into our studies like how we are um, tonight, you know, the only good good things can come from it because we, um, I see, like, I heard, um, I can't remember where I heard it from, but um, I remember hearing that whatever we, whatever we sleep with, that's the first thing we're going to wake up to. So if we sleep with our Bible and studying the Word of God, that's the only thing we're going to wake up to. That's the first thing we wake up and reach to. So if we grab our phone or whatever, we sleep to watching movies. That's the first thing we want to wake up to. We're going to be, we're going to want to turn the TV on and watch another movie, you know. We're not going to want to go to work or, so, yeah, that's another, um, you know, it's all in, in our motives, you know, our drive, what drives us in the morning. It's, uh, it's what, what's, what's going to take us throughout that day. And throughout the next day, it's all in our motives. And um, yeah, we've got about five minutes if anybody wants to add on before I finish off. Thank you. I was just, sorry, it's me, Chi. I was just thinking, but it's okay to be wealthy and rich and have that heart as well, right? Yeah? Okay. So yeah, that was... yeah, do you know why? This came to me the other day. Um, I was watching this. Uh, it was like a, uh, it was a homeschool thing, but they were talking about how um, children. It's not when they. It's not if they're going to see uh, pornography. Sorry, <laughs> just as, yeah, but it was talking about that. It's not if they're going to see. It's when, based on technology nowadays. So this was this man who was very wealthy. But he ended up using his money to form a company that um, has, with Christian values, that has put together an app that tracks everything your child does and that also, um, can stop websites for them going on to. And if they tap into a website that hasn't been cleared, it sends the notification to your phone. And right. I praise the Lord that this man's rich, that he can afford to make 
this app and that he's Christians. And then it occurred to me that, you know, God gives wealth to people um, Hmm. and he can use wealth in people for his glory. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was, I was just thinking, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's okay too to be wealthy and um, do the works of the Lord and have, uh, and not be like that man, the foolish man. Thank you. I just wanted to add on to Chi's thing. Um, I think it is okay to be wealthy, but I think it's, um, I can't remember who said, I think it might be Mose or Delvina, uh, about the motivation behind it. The um, you know, making sure that your motivations are pure, I guess, and sharing that with other people or making it benefit. You know, it just turns into worms. You know, you, no matter how much you try and earn, it's just going to be all burnt up. But when you allow God to lead you, you know, it's something else. Like he entrusts you with a little bit. And then when you're faithful, he gives you more and more. And, and it's just all, and it's just, yeah, all for his glory and, and not our own. Amen. Amen. I, uh, yep, nothing, nothing wrong with being wealthy. Uh, just don't use the motive that I had growing up. You know, always, always trying to chase the dream to be like Fifty Cent and and the game. How how they were uh, spending all their money. You know, they had all the clothing, the cars, the houses. Well, that was the wrong motive. And thank you guys for for all the inputs and the add-ons. And I think I think I, I try to look it up here, the rich being rich towards God. And I think Nata mentioned it that uh well, what I think of it, well what it means is to be uh thankful to God for for our many blessings, uh whether it's small or large, you know. And um I think Nata mentioned that that we have to give uh, return God's portion to God, you know, not not take a large portion from Him, and then of all the blessings, and then we return with a small portion. So we 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 uh, must give back to God what's His, what's what, uh, what's rightfully His. Can I just add to that, Mossy? Um, when you were talking being faithful like was it you or Nutter? faithful with little I feel like you can change the faithful too with thankful when you, you who are thankful with little will be thankful with much but you who are not thankful with little even when you have much you will not be thankful you'll keep wanting and wanting and wanting so like we were saying before as well just acknowledging God in the process because that's what he didn't do he didn't acknowledge that God gave him all that stuff he acknowledged that he worked hard for it. Thank you for that, Vino. Um, yeah, it's it's the world that we live in, I guess. So, hey guys, you know, we we never satisfied with what we have. We always it's not a it's not a bad thing, you know. It's, you know, we want uh, the best for our kids and ourselves. And sometimes we want, we want too much. Or sometimes we, we, we get, like I said before, we get uh, all their blessings and we, sometimes we are not happy. We want more. And, um, and, with this little passage, you know, the another, another wealth that uh, we all have is is our Bible. You know, it's, it's um that's the best wealth that we can we can ask for. I think um I'm I'm, luck, I'm lucky to be a Christian to know Jesus is coming to take us home, and so to have uh, that wealth and not share it with um my friends and family is is holding. You know, uh. I believe that's holding. Um, I know the I know the gospel of Jesus Christ, so why not share this beautiful Savior with with our family and friends? And 
you know, just reading through that passage, that's what I believe the, in our time, you know, in our time, I believe that's, that's, um, that's holding in myself, you know, I, I, so many people walk past me, you know, and I, I tend to not, even the people that talk to me, you know, the randoms, you know, I tend to not to go away from that, from that side, you know, I don't want to mention anything about, about Jesus Christ or anything like that. Um, yeah, thanks again. Thanks again for tonight, guys. Um, hopefully you guys uh, have, um, have learned um, a lot like myself. Um, so yeah, if uh, we could all um, we'll just go around in a circle. If uh, I'll take care of for for time, and uh, we'll start off with with uh, Darcy, please, and then Bina. Thanks, Mosey, for leading out tonight. Um, damn, learnt so much. Um. My take home would be to um, really check what um what my motives are um in trying to where where I want to be in this world and um I really love this verse twenty one yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth but not have a rich relationship with God and I just think that um it was what Kara said uh, the relationship with God is um the the spiritual um, richness, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. That's me. Cool. Thanks, Mose, for tonight. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, I'll just tell a story that it's not too long. But, <laughs> but I've been wanting um, a house. And it started off with like legitimate reasons to want a house for the kids. Yeah, it always starts off good. It was like, okay, the kids, we want the kids to have a good house that we live in. That's got a piece of section, a section with trees and nature outside that they want to go outside and enjoy nature. No sirens <laughs> in the back. No sirens. Um, <laughs> man, this, and then now, see, that was how it started. Now it's ended up the list getting longer and longer and longer. And now I'm looking at these things on Pinterest, what houses look like. I'm like, now I want that. Now I want this. Now I want that. And then I'm searching for things on the internet and Nuttall knows this. And I said to Nuttall today, oh my gosh, Nuttall, I'm so stressed because I really want a house. And he was just like, well, maybe, you know, just be um, calm and be thankful for where we are that we have a roof over our heads. And so I think that God specifically designed this for me today, this Bible study, <laughs> to be like, Vina, you're going a bit crazy. <laughs> Focus, be content. I've, and I think he's telling me, Vina, I've given you a roof. You know, that's what I wanted. I've given you a roof. I've given you food. I've given you your kids. And they're healthy and they're safe. And you've got, your parents are here, man. There's so much to be thankful for. And all I'm thinking is looking at my house. I'm sleeping with the phone because <laughs> you know how you, what you sleep with, what you wake up with. I'm sleeping with the phone looking at these things and what houses are available. So thank you so much. God's saying just be content and thankful for, with the, thankful for the small thing that he's given me and know that actually at the end of the day, this is not small. It's still something I can be used to bless others with um, through God and just be thankful for it. So thank you. You will go uh, Kara then Nata, please. Um, well, I don't really have a big story like Salvina, but <laughs> I just wanted to echo what everybody else was saying. Something that did come to mind tonight over our um, conversations was this COVID stuff that's happened recently. The pandemic has kind of, I think it's checked everybody in terms of their financial situation and their spiritual situation and, you know, where they are. And I think it's kind of brought to reality that we don't actually really need much to get by. 
I think all of us in this group, I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I think all of us in this group are, are pretty safe in terms of our um, employments, um, our financial situation. We've got a roof over our head, we've got food on the table, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's just kind of brought to mind to me that we are all blessed, regardless of our um, bank account. You know, God, God has kind of like looked after all of us through this pandemic and, and going forward, hopefully. And, and that's something that we can share with others, which is what I think you guys did on Saturday night in terms of the feed the streets. I do apologize, I wasn't able to make it, but, um, you know, I think that is definitely something that can, that is kind of a, um, is, is something that is tangible for us to kind of be able to do that for other people. And I think it does mean a lot to them, even though we might not think it's much. That's it. Amen. Um, that's so funny, Rina, that you said that. I won't go into much of it, but because um, we're supposed to meet with um, Tuffer's boss's mortgage broker. <laughs> but it's so funny how the story went. I was supposed to launch um, this project, right, about the second coming. And I sort of, sort of put that on the back foot, like, because I was like, okay, um, we we're told, you know, September, October, the house prices will be, um, the market will be good by then. <laughs> anyway, that's just being a rich fool. Um, but yeah, what I take tonight is, is, is not to be a, you know, spiritually rich fool. You know, sometimes... For me, I can be so heavenly minded that I'm no earthly good. Um, and like what Kara said, you know, things that we think doesn't mean much to somebody else, but it might mean a lot to them. Like that, honestly, that man, Ash, he looked like Tuffer and Nora were like his besties, like they grew up together. You know, he was smiling, he was laughing, he didn't even care that he ate in front of them and they, you know, didn't have food. He was so comfortable. Um, so yeah, that, that's my take home from tonight's lesson. Thank you so much, Mosi. Um, yeah, don't be too heavenly minded that I'm no earthly good to anybody here. Thank you, Nata. I will go to Chi Tufts, the attorney search. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mosse. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think my take-home message tonight would be, um, <laughs> sorry, probably opposite to what Nata, maybe be, be more heavenly minded um, in terms of responding to, to those, uh, the, the, the I, I people, <laughs> the me, me, me. So, um, and exercising and practicing the uh, fruits of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> sure, Mossy. The um, I think everybody said what I was going to say. Uh, the main thing for me was verse fifteen. I said, "How oh, Jesus says, watch out, be on your guard." Um, I think that's something I need to work on because I'm I'm starting to let little things in. Uh, where I'll, I'll start investing my time um, and my attention and whether it's good or not, it, it's up to me to ask God to reveal that, to correct it. And that's something I'll be working on this week. Thank you. Thank you, Tufts. Uh, Tony Sage. Um, sure, mostly for um, the work tonight uh, and taking Bible studies. Um, yeah, basically what everyone's saying, but to add to that, I guess um, just got to be thankful always for, for everything that we have, things that we get, don't matter if it's big or small, I guess just to be thankful that we're in a stable situation. Because there are people out there who are struggling 
and it's good to know some of those people, like I guess it just reminds us. And even at the end of the week, if whatever we have left over, I guess it's always good to give to those that we know that don't have much. And yeah, it's just thanking God for everything. And it's good to um, show the, our family and also our kids that side of things. So, yeah, that's my take home message. Um, my mate here. Sorry, so for tonight was. Um, I could totally relate to the guy that we were talking about tonight. Eh? <laughs> because um, I've been a fool too many times. <laughs> then um, I could, um, you know, growing up, always wanted like keep wanting things, and I uh, wanted it so much, I ended up getting it the illegal way, and then ended up um, going on a foolishness vacation. <laughs> But um, yeah, I I just um really appreciate like really appreciate the things that I have now, um, all the small things you know you just gotta accept it on the way. But um, I truly believe in um the power of prayer and um, you know when you you have friends that will be with you, but you don't know like the you know Serious. people that are there praying for you, and um that's the thing I love about um. You know, being in, in 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 a Christian in a Christian life, and um, I thank God and thank my parents for that, and also um, everyone in our church family. So at the end of the day, don't be a fool. <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. Thank you, Vic. Thank you to everybody. Uh, I thought I thought Vic was asleep on the other side, but Moses is definitely listening. Um, yeah, we all on the we all on this hard journey, eh, guys, and and we we come together, you know, um, on here to try and uh, learn as much as possible about about um, our Jesus Christ, and and we just gotta remember, guys, that He's actually leading us, you know, you know, all all these studies that we're doing, He's the real leader, and. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for all the input. I learned I learned heaps just from from the scriptures and from you guys. You guys all sharing your personal lives on here. Um, everybody knows Victor's personal lives, and you know, thank him for reminding us about his life, his journey as well. Um, yeah, thank you guys, and and yeah, thanks to. Uh, to everybody that's all um, that's um, had an input in, in tonight, and yep, and that's us for tonight. And um, so I'll I'll lead us in. I'll, I'll I'll finish us finish our studies off in the word of prayer. Uh, let us pray. Our dear heavenly Father, we thank you for for another beautiful day, beautiful evening you've given us. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for providing us with this platform that with our voices, your word can be heard and with your Holy Spirit, we can have better understanding. We thank you for your presence. Uh, we thank you for reminding us that wealth is not only in money form, but also in knowledge and wisdom of you. Uh, please be with everyone that's on here tonight, uh, throughout the week. Uh, please be with their families and friends. Um, throughout this week, whether they're at work, uh, school, or at home, we thank you for so many things. We thank you for the blessings. Um, we come here tonight to ask for your forgiveness, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, guys. My Lord, thank My you. Vina, can I can I talk to you quickly after this, please? Definitely. Thank you, Mose. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Hi everyone. Yeah. Are you able to do it? Because we're doing the rotation again. You're all good. Um, to, are you all good to do next week? Oh, uh, um, I don't know if I'm going to be in Auckland next week, but I can do.